finally free. The former Emir of Kano regains freedom after the Federal High Court in Abuja orders his release. And immunity is on the front burner of the Senate again. This time, a bill is seeking to strip government officials of immunity when found guilty of fraud or electoral crimes. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. You're welcome to the program. The dethroned Emir of Kanu, Muhammad Dulamido Sanusi II, has left his place of detention in Awe Nasarawa State after the Federal High Court in Abuja ordered his release from detention and confinement imposed on him by the Kanu State Government. The court, while given its ruling, stated the former Emir is entitled to his constitutionally guaranteed rights to personal liberty and movement. Joining me in the studio to have a conversation on this is legal practitioner Obi Ajebo. Thank you very much for coming. We will be joined uh, via phone. I don't know if we have him on the line already. Also a legal practitioner, Pelumi Olajengbesi. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Pleasure to have you both on the program. Now, his, his, his order for release has been granted pending the outcome uh, of the case, and he has moved. It, when we started prepping, we were thinking, okay, he's probably just going to be a problem with his release, but it all seems to have gone very well. What's your take on this first victory for Sanusi? Uh, um, they, they should not, they should never have or the banished him. One of those eras of uh, era of banishment, and there's a court case that gives an, a local standing on it, which is the case of um, Emir Jokolo. So he had, they have no right. First of all, they impeached on his freedom of movement, f liberty, and so many rights. So they have no right. So there was no issue of them not even attending to it because of the caliber of person he is, and also because of the attention the thing has been drawing. Okay, but, but, but there's something else. Let me come to you, uh, Pelumi. Um, I spoke to a, a social commentator earlier today uh, who was of the opinion that it would be quite difficult to reverse the banishment considering that it is tradition. Do you see tradition uh, playing out here again? What are his chances of getting the court to reverse that banishment? Well, um, let me quickly say this now. We have experienced the most primitive action that can be carried out by any government in all over the world. And that experience is actually a solid tale because it has actually destroyed and put a stain on the Nigerian democratic experience. I am very confident that if um, Manla Sanusi is willing to get his throne back, he can get it through the court process. Because the judiciary is an institution that is the neutral habitat that has the capacity to decide on such a matter. And the issue is determinant and banishment is not known to any law. This is simply because even if a king would be dethroned in Nigeria, there are certain procedures that have been established that must be followed. But the, yeah, but the, the, the no. case, um, sorry to interject, but they cited the um, Emirates law that guaranteed they can um, dethrone an emir for insubordination, which is one of the reasons that was given. Are you saying that that is not in the law? Yeah, you see, you must also be able to differentiate between banishment and dethronement. He was dethroned and later banished. But all of these things, like I said, is not known to law. Now, you think if there is any law in Nigeria that is inconsistent with the Nigerian constitution, which is the current law, that law is to the extent of its inconsistency null and void. The simple thing is that the law has actually established a procedure in which any who is found to have committed law to be a fair trial. And that is established in the principle of fear, you know, in the principle of fear, everybody was giving fear trying in every matter. And this is very simple. Mother Sanusi has not been given any fair trial. And as any law that the country government is resting not to take such a decision, such law is not known to our constitution, is not acceptable, such law is primitive, and such law is baseless. 
And also, I must add that the law the uh, council government is resting on has not even been followed properly. You must also agree with me that in Nigeria, any matter that is before the court is subjugated. And all parties are expected to stay out of such matter until the court decides on me. The most that I know about the Anusi Anusi saga, Malas Anusi has commenced an action before a court of law to establish the fact that the new Emirates law is inconsistent with the Nigerian constitution and such law cannot be said to be effective. So the law itself is a subject of litigation. Therefore, I know and believe strongly that the determinant and management of malapparency is not known to law. It's uh, an high level of display of rascality by government. And it was with the public in our democracy. You see, unfortunately, a lot of people, when given power, when they exact the mentalities of power, they go so powerful and they become so ruthless. They have this thing for people who have courage who speaks truth to power. And that is the experience we are having in Tanusi. And I believe strongly that the Nigerian people must rise in unity to the occasion to supply voice and give the needed support to Mala Tanusi. This is not because it's about him, but it's about the fact that our democracy must be allowed to flourish positively. Okay, um, we'll come to some of the issues you raised later, but I want to ask you, um, do you, do you think that the Kanu state government was expecting this, particularly after Sanusi um, is on record saying he has accepted um, the fate that has befallen him because it is the will of Allah? What is the implication of his court action now on the government, uh, for the government of Kanu state? His, um... He said it's the will of God. That is his own personal belief. But you know he has lawyers, he has advisors. The lawyers should act um, on his behalf, at his directive. If he has said publicly that he has accepted his fate, why would he go to court? Was the, what is the implication um, of what that for may, the... might be what he's talking about is the dethronement. But other actions, even the process of getting that dethronement is faulty. And then another one also is the issue of banishing him. We don't banish MS, we don't banish our rulers anymore. We just remove them through court processes and then get it through the process that has been said in the secular that got them into that place in the first place. So him saying is the will of God. Every, every devout Muslim leaves everything and says it as the will of God. Okay, uh, let me come to you, uh, Pelumi. Um, uh, the applicant, um, the, that's the deposed emir, um, one of the pleas was that, I don't know if, this, if it is the language that you use, was that um, he will not go back to Kanu State. He will refrain from going there, which is one of the reasons that was given, that two emirs cannot be in the same emirate. So um, my question is, should we... Uh, be concerned about that, does it imply that he is um, allowing the Kanu state government to save face as it stands? Yeah, you see, this, like I said before, it is within the, uh, all, all, everything that has happened in Kanu state is um, a display of um, illegality and uh, executive rascality. And all of these things have no place in our law. Mr. Amala and Sanusi can go to anywhere he chooses to go to. He can go to Kano anytime. The punishment, like, for example, like what the court said today, the court has actually decided that he has his right to go to anywhere in interim pending the determination of the matter. Because his fundamental right is supreme to whatever the decision of the Kano state government uh, has made. And I believe strongly, for example, you raised, I couldn't hear you clearly, but you raised the issue of. Um, he's um, voluntarily accepting that he's okay with whatever the John must have happened. That is his own statement. But the matter that is before the court already must be determined and must be decided. And if the law says that Mala Sanusi remains the lawful enemy of Kano State, so be. Hello? Um, I, I think we kind of lost um, him there. We'll 
come back when we come back to him when we get him. Uh, but there's something I wanted to um, ask you at the commencement of the um, case. The lawyers uh, to Sanusi raised an issue about concern. Uh, for his health as um, one of the reasons presented in court. But we saw him, he presided over um, a prayer just in, an hour before uh, he proceeded to leave uh, that state. Some are saying that um, it's just a gimmick uh, to get the sympathies of the judge. Others are saying, um, is it something we should be worried about really? Well, it's not a gimmick because nobody knows how many months or years they intended keeping him there. And when you check the comfort and the, and the serenity of Kanu um, Palace to this place, and nobody knows his health status, he could be, for instance, he could be asthmatic, and they can, they can keep, they can maintain that in um, Kanu, but they cannot maintain that in aware where he was kept. So nobody knows. I will not disregard it as a gimmick. Okay. Um, I don't know. Do we have uh, Pelumi back on the line? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Thank you very much. We're glad uh, you're still with us. Um, I want to ask, if he succeeds with this banishment, the case is up for um, a hearing, I think, um, later this month. Um, if he, should he succeed, would do you see a scenario where he takes on uh, his dethronement as well to court? You, you, you said what? If he succeeds with the banishment, do you see him taking on the issue of his dethronement as well? Yeah, yeah, because the issue of his dethronement can be in court also. The, the dethronement itself is uh, okay. There is a I also do not forget before the pronouncement of his dethronement, there's an issue in court already that is challenging the power of the state government to dethrone him. So all the matters are already in court. Our hope and our faith is in the judiciary that the court will have the needed courage to determine the matter in line with justice and in line with natural court. And I must say quickly, the experience we are having today is, um, is a signal the President Buhari administration is nothing to write home about. You understand with me very well that the DSS, the Nigerian Police Force, the Nigerian Army, and all of these security agencies are directly under the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And all of these agencies are involved in the process of restraining Manla Sanusi's rights when he was a natural of the court decided and gave a decision that he should be given his liberty. This goes to show that the president of the federal government of Nigeria is complicit in the, ex in the studied experience of Mala Sanusi. Our concern as um, members of this country, of this society, is that today we have leaders who are in position of authority, who are very clear in power, who use power as if that is the end of, that is the, end of the road. And it's actually a painful experience. There's a need for us as the Nigerian people to next time check carefully, to know the quality of institution of authority. Unlike what we have now, it's less entities I check the mentalities of power and they use it to oppress the people. The experience Sanusi is up to be can be anyone. If a Sanusi in Nigeria can be so oppressed, can be so molested, can be so disgraced by the of the every single country. Is a, can be victim of such an oppression at any but, point but, in time. But, 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 some um, people have come up to say, even his aides have come up to say that the talk about Vendetta is not um, a part of the process, that it was purely a case of um, insubordination. Uh, that's what they're saying. Um, don't you believe that that is the reason, um, other than the speculations about um, the governor taking on Sanusi because he did not support him in his last election? Look, I strongly believe that this is a political issue. You see, the, the, the vocabulary called insubordination cannot only survive in the, in the thinking faculty of the government of Sanusi. This is a matter that must be subject to, you know, an open judicial investigation and analysis. So, the governor cannot sit down in Kano State and declare to the world 
that a who has a clear focus and sense of direction, a man of sanity standing, who has his neck well food on his an act of motivation. I do not believe by any standing or by any thinking that anyone should support the government that is doing the wrong thing in order not to be held for his subordination. As I speak to you as a citizen, we all have right to depart from the position of our government, believe that our government will encourage us to commit illegality or commit any crime that is against humanity. So I do not believe that Sanitia has a case of insubordination and same as not be established against him. All right. Um, I'm told we have um, just a few minutes uh, before the program is. I would have taken you on on the issue of the banishment again, if he's going to take on his dethronement subsequently. But I'll just move on uh, to play the devil's advocates mm -hmm. now. Um, a social commentator, Renault Mokri, um, brought up an issue on social media that I felt, you know, deserves some attention. Um, he talked about, uh, let me see, he said, Sanusi talked passionately about educating Amajiri and Tala. Was. I think so that's the poor. Was the yeah. Poor. Yet, while he was Emir, he built not even a single school for them. This is even as he spent billions of naira renovating his palace, money that could have built 500 schools for the Talakwa, um, Talakawa he, in quotes, loves so much. Your reaction to that? I read somewhere that there was some foundation that Sanusi brought into Kano. I, I can't remember the foundation. But um, nevertheless, he's an emir. He, would, he has been doing some things privately, and it's not something that he'll discuss publicly. But is it the emir that should do these things for the Talakawa, or he should speak sense to the leaders to, do, to have a program for educating these children? That's still another argument mm -hmm. against his non-conformist nature. He is also one of the leaders that he was calling out yes. um, um, in all of his statesmen. So um, shouldn't he be talking with those leaders so that they can address this problem, other than putting it in the media and saying, they, they should do this, they should do that? Is that the way to go? How are we sure he hasn't spoken to them privately? And out of frustration, he's now voicing it out publicly. Surely he would have time, he would have time to talk to them privately and say, let us do this, let us do this. OK. I, I'm afraid I have too much, much question to ask, but we're out of time. Thank you very much okay, for your thoughts you. so far. And of course, uh, thank you, uh, Palumi, for your thoughts uh, as well. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, so take a short break, and when we return, a new bill that could strip public officers of their immunity has passed second reading. Stay with us. <laughs>